1.5 notes. Um, I'm going to start off looking at this diagram. Uh, this saying says interpreting diagrams and basically we have this picture here and this is everything that you can assume with uh, how it's drawn and then things that you cannot assume. Okay, so this says you can assume that all points are coplanar. You can assume that GH and J are collinear and you have these rays, HM, HL, HK, and then line GJ intersect at H. So yeah, that makes sense. H is like the point that's intersecting with all of them. H is between G and J, yes. L is in the interior of angle MHK. Yeah, here's L, here's MHK. Um, you can assume that these are adjacent angles, GHM, GHM, and M -A -M -H -L. Yes, you can assume they're adjacent. Since this is a straight line, you can assume that GHL and LHJ are a linear pair, okay? And because they're a linear pair, that means they're supplementary. And speaking of supplementary angles, JHK, JHK, and KHG, KHG, would be supplementary because it's just two angles. Do they add up to form a straight line? Yes, they do. Okay, things that you cannot assume unless it's marked. You can't assume that any of these lines are perpendicular, okay, aka creating 90 degree angles. Uh, you cannot assume congruency, and you cannot assume that the segments are congruent. Even though they might look like, uh, it might look like these angles are congruent, something like that, or this line segment from H to J is going to be the same distance as from H to K. You can't assume that unless it's marked or given to you in some way or another, okay? Um, so in this example, I have it saying, in the figure below, it appears that FG is perpendicular, that's the symbol for perpendicular, to JK, all right? However, you can't assume that's true unless the measure of angle FHJ equals 90 degrees is given. So if you were to see a little right angle symbol somewhere, like right here, or here, or here, or here. If any of those are given, then you sure, you can uh, assume that these lines are perpendicular. But since no angle measure is given, you cannot assume that these are perpendicular lines, okay? So we're gonna take that knowledge into applying it to uh, this right here. Um, in this picture, we are given that this segment, AB, is congruent to this segment, BC, and this little angle, ABG, is going to be congruent to CBD, all right? And then also, GBF is a 90-degree angle, okay? That's what we're given. So, uh, we're going to determine whether each statement can be assumed from the figure, and then we'll explain why or why not, okay? So is angle DBC and ABG, are they complementary? So DBC and ABG. DBC is this. ABG is this. We know that they're congruent, but complementary means that they add up to 90 degrees. Okay? Um, I would say no for a couple of reasons. Reason one, we're not given any angle measures, so we don't know if they add up to 90 degrees. Um, but number two, look, I know this is 90. If I take, and I know this is a straight line, that's 180 degrees. If I take 90 away from 180, I'm left with 90. But look, I have one, two, three other angles. So I know if I add those three angles up, it'll add up to 90. But if I add these two up, it should be less than 90, okay? So how can I kind of quickly summarize that? We just don't know that they are complementary, okay? Letter B, it says angle ABD and CBD are a linear pair. So let's trace what ABD and CBD are. ABD is this one, and CBD, yes, because they are adjacent angles. Linear pairs need to be adjacent angles that share a straight line. So I can say that. Angles on a straight line.
is perpendicular to ray BG. So let's go ahead and look at those. So yes, you can assume that because there's a marked 90 degree angle and that's how perpendicular lines intersect. Find the value of each variable. So these are vertical angles. Um, and so we're going to set 2x minus 10 equal to 120. Okay, so we're going to solve for x. I cannot combine these two to make a singular number. So what I'm going to do instead is uh, the minus 10 is a constant number. It does not have a letter with it. So I'm going to get it to the other side with 120, which is also a constant number. So the opposite of minus 10 is plus 10. And so I'm going to add it over to the other side. And then 2x means 2 times x. So to get rid of the 2, I have to do the opposite of that. And so the opposite of times 2 would be to divide 2. And 130 divided by 2 is 65. And I'm going to plug this 65 back in because I know it's going to equal 120 degrees. 2 times 65 is 130. 130 minus 10 is 120. So that's how you know we did it right. Okay. Adjacent, and they're on a straight line, so that means they're a linear pair. So that must mean they're adding up to 180 degrees. So that's how I'll set this up. I'll write 2x plus 4x plus 108 equals 180 degrees. Okay, so let's combine our like terms. The 2x and 4x both have x's, so they can combine with each other. Um, but the 108 does not have an x with it. So I'm going to keep that 108. Now 108 and 180 are my constant numbers and because they do not have letters next to them. So you should get your constant numbers to go to the other side, to like one side of the equal sign. So 180, leave it alone. Look at that plus 108. Do the opposite of that, minus 108 to the other side. And 180 minus 108 is going to be 72 x equals 72 and 6x means 6 times x so to get rid of the 6 I have to do the opposite which is divide by 6 and 72 divided by 6 is going to be 12 so x equals 12 and I could plug these back in to find each uh, angle because I don't know what either one is so I'll just go ahead and do that right now and then 4 times 12 plus 108. I wrote that down here. 2 times 12, that's 24. 4 times 12 is 48 plus 108 is 156. And you can do a quick check. What's 156 plus 24? That's 180 degrees, which is what it's supposed to equal when you add them together. All right, last problem. So we have a combination of the previous two problems. You can see here that these are vertical angles. If they're across from each other, like on an X, then they're vertical angles. And then these two here are a linear pair, you know, adjacent angles on a straight line that will add up to 180 degrees. So you see these are different letters. So I can't work with these yet until I figure out what X is, okay? Um, these are the same letters, so I've got to work with these first. So the first thing you should do, since you see that they're vertical angles, is set them equal to each other. I'm going to need to get all my x's on one side and all my constant numbers, aka the numbers without a letter, to the other side of the equal sign. Okay, so I see 2x is smaller than 3x, and so the opposite of 2x would be to do minus 2x because it's a positive 2x, so got to do the opposite to get rid of it. 3x minus 2x is 1x, so I'm just going to write down a singular x. You don't have to put the 1 by the x. Um, and then I can bring down the 25 equals x minus 10. All right, so now I need to focus on getting my constants to one side. 
Um, so that means I'm going to leave that 25 alone and I'm going to do the opposite of minus 10 and do plus 10 to the other side. And then I'm going to get 35 equals x. Now that I know that x equals 35, I can plug it in to um, either one of these. You should get the same thing. So, but I'm just going to plug it into this one, the 2x plus 25. Um, that's 2 times 35 plus 25. So 2 times 35 is 70. 70 plus 25 is 95. Okay, so let's look back at this picture one more time. I have a 95 degree angle right there. And I know if I add that to y, it's going to add up to 180 degrees. So I just go down here and I say 95 plus y equals 180. And I can get rid of that positive 95 by minusing it over to the other side. And y is going to equal 85 degrees. And um, yeah, that's it. It says y degrees, so y is 85. And um, yeah, that's it for this problem. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something, and goodbye.